And I assume that the majority of you are interested to learn. Let me see. Let me get everything into Zoom condition. Yes. That you want to understand how fascia does not only affect hands on uh, massage and myofascial release and rolfing, but also how it affects athletic performance. And let me already share with you the accomplishment of three years of hard work in the last years, not only of me as one of the four editors, but I think of 60 authors in the new edition of the Handspring book, Fascia in Sport and Movement. So if at the end of this lecture, which will be slightly more than one hour, and then I'll take questions and answers afterwards, and then I'm eager afterwards to hear Chong how he takes, I know he's very knowledgeable and he probably knows all my slides by heart and can, can uh, talk, uh, uh, talk as well about the research behind it. But he is one of the pioneers who has been putting that into clinical practice. And I'm looking very much forward to Chong's subsequent one and a half hours. And then we, at the end of that, so it will be almost a half day of very informational inspirational webinar information. And then at the end, we have a question and answer session again. Now, how does this matter to sports medicine? Because in the past, people paid a lot of attention to neuromuscular coordination, like neuroathletic training, or they paid attention to cardiovascular conditioning, or they paid attention to getting strong muscles. And people assumed you don't need to have a force pillar by emphasizing your connective tissue, because if you train your muscles, you also your fascia will also get stronger. You don't need to emphasize that with a separate training program. But this has been a very profound contributing research from my German research fellow, Jan Wilke, where he did a systematic review where do the sports associated connect, uh, myofascial injuries or muscle strain injuries, where do they happen? You know how common that is in soccer players uh, to have hamstring injuries. You are in, and in most of the athletics uh, sports, if you look at high performance, the injury rate is very high. And usually you talk about muscle strains. But if you take a microscope and look what portion of the muscle is injured, in the majority of the cases, it is not the contractile muscle fibers, it is not the sarcomeres, it is the fascial component of the muscle, the myofascial unit. So it is either in the tendon or it's in the intramuscular collagenous connective tissue. So he did that in a very recent systematic review. So yes, there are pure muscular lesions, but they are very rare. So they only make up 12.7%. And the rest are all fascial injuries, uh, using fascia in the more functional definition that I explained before, in which not only the tendons are part of it, but also the intramuscular connective tissue. Now, if that is the case, if the majority of your sports associated strain injuries are happening in the fascial system, then that has been your weakest link in your strengthening program. And if you want to be smart, don't continue to make your muscles stronger because they are not the majority of your injuries. Please focus on the weakest link and then you have a chance to be more injury free. That is almost li like a no brainer. And many people have brains in sports science. And since Jan Wilke published that in 2019, not only Chong, not only Jan Wilke, but other people are realizing we need to study how to strengthen not only what is already strong, but what seems to be the weakest link in the loading chain in which the majority of uh, sports associated injuries are happening. So that then of course brings up the question, what do we know about the connective uh, tissue? Long time. This is one of the perhaps the most important 
understanding of last year is that the hyperarchic fascia training can influence the deepest layer of fascia, which is the arachnoid layer, which goes from all the way from your top of the brain, all the way down in the spine, and it's within the spinal cord. Now, a lot of people have this condition called arachnoiditis or AA. When this type of condition happens, it usually could be because a operatorial needle inserting into the spine, creating a adhesion there, fascial adhesion. The fascial adhesion doesn't get, get cleared by, by itself. It creates fibrosis. Then later on, it causes enormous amount of pain in the body because it's in the spinal cord. So your whole body will feel terrible. And there's many, many symptoms such as ear raining, trouble sleeping, incontinence, back pain, couldn't sit for more than three minutes. And when the pain is so bad, the person has to either lie down and sleep or take heavy doses of anti-neural inflammatory drugs. There is no cure. There is no cure. So if your spine, for example, is severed by accident, there's bones that punctures the arachnoid layer and it creates adhesions, you're pre pretty much done from the mainstream perspective. Not much, not so much when we, when we apply our knowledge of fascial training. We actually can influence the holistic fascia connection. This is very, very exciting because after eight weeks, she reported zero flare-ups from the adhesive arachnitis. He has, she has been having these conditions for over six years. And also we're going to take a MRI to confirm that the, the actual injury site has healed. So this is, a, this is a very, very big deal. And, and this is why I want to work with academics to make this mainstream. It's very, very important. Case study 21, surgery rehab. This, is, this particular case is after a Achilles rupture and surgery. As you can see, week one, when the gentleman came to me, his right calf is significantly smaller. That's due to, again, atrophy because of the injury on the fascia side never gets addressed. So it prevents the proper nutrition to the actual muscle tissue itself. Again, he was prescribed to do many, many calf races but it does not help. In five weeks of training on the fascia, increase the fascial connection, increase the myofibroblast level at the correct level, not fibrosis, we're able to balance this condition. Okay. Oops, let me go back. Surgery rehab after ACLs. Now, how many people have heard of ACL? Uh, this is a very common injury in, in football, in basketball. Usually the, the mainstream rehab process in, involving strengthening the quads, calves, and also doing hip bridges using muscular exercises. When you do these type of isolation exercises or, or compound exercise for that matter, it is muscle-based exercises. It does not increase the fascial connection level from the feet to the glutes. To do that, you have to increase the fascial tensioning level in the foot properly. You have to overcome not to introduce bad fascial tensioning. You have to overcome, not produce too much, so you create fibrosis. This is the result. No knee pains after three ACL tears. And for the first time in nine years, Gabriel, a professional athlete, soccer athlete reported for nine years, he had knee pain and for the first time, there is no knee pain. And Gabriel also is a sports science student. He told me that there is no mention of fascia in his education at all. And he has to write papers about muscle. Okay. This is another surgery recap case. His name is Shea. He's a basketball athlete, a young, young person. Used to have a lot of knee troubles and also shoulder and uh, elbow issues. When he tore his knee, he got he received the surgery that removed part of his leg uh, part of his uh, uh, meniscus and uh, he had tried uh, three weeks of PT before coming to me and the swelling wasn't going down and four weeks later this is what you can see because the fascia is also working very closely with lymphatic system as the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump 
by working with the fascia, you can increase, accelerate the regeneration process. And that's what we're seeing here, which is, which is just great. I mean, this person I'm still helping with today, we want to get him to the next level of competition. Case 22, elbow and shoulder tendonitis. Now this guy tried everything. Physio, eccentric loading, isometric loading, rest, massage, myofibro, myofascial release, instrument assisted, soft tissue, uh, mobilization, cupping, dry needling, beta C, hyaluronic NASA, collagen, bone breath, turmeric, curcumin, MSM, black seed oil, you name it. Also BPC-1557, some of the therapy helped, but only the short term started with hyperfascial training, things are improving fast. There is a natural way for the body to heal, but unfortunately, because our segmented understanding of the body, we were not providing these people with the right solutions. Okay. And finally here, tight fitted fascia grants underlying tissue, the protection of the fascia web, as well as the healing benefit of myofibroblast cells. What have been known accepted in this field is that through mechanical tension, we can convert fibroblast cells to myofibroblasts, which is essential for connective tissue remodeling during wound healing. Sometimes an unregulated myofibroblast causes adhesions or fibrosis. However, through hyperarch fascia training, we have discovered a way or window to manage this naturally and control the balance between physiological tissue regeneration and pathological fibro fibrotic response. We believe it's the slack in the fascia that could sometimes cause an even distribution of myofibroblast cells. Again, this has to be studied into further and uh, with the help of forward-thinking fascia researchers like Dr. Robert Schneid and more. We want the whole world to, to study this. And this is why we are sponsor at the 2022 Fascia Research Congress. And potentially we're selecting 10 PhDs to, for, to sponsor. You know, if you are interested, contact info at fasciaresearchsociety.org. We want to open dialogue and discussion with academics. Since I have years of experience on the clinical side, now it's time for scientific scrutiny. Let's go. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone today for coming. 2022 is the year of fascia. We're entering a new age of fascia fitness. For the longest time, there was nothing on the fascia side that can generate power from the body like what we have seen in muscle training. The work we do will change that and upset the scale of balance and disrupt the entire industry. Join me and Coach Ahmed at the 2022 Fascia Congress in Canada if you want to work with us, please, please schedule a call on my website and we can begin to work. Thank you. All right. I'm opening up for questioning. I don't have a question. I just want to express my surprise. Yes. Chong, I thought I was the main speaker and you were some add-on. I was completely wrong. Uh, your presentation has been the main thing. And I can now understand why it took you 10 years to develop that. Uh, what you have presented is profound. I can judge that because I have a pretty wide overview on the field. It answers many of the questions that we just have been discussing in Padua during the week-long dissection, which we did. For example, examining the force transmission from the gluteus maximus, because it's not active when it was supposed to be. And it seems to be an envelope uh, stiffener. And I think your explanation makes a lot of sense. So during listening to you, I made this one here. It's very similar to your oranges that there are some muscle in the body and the gluteus maximus seems to be mainly doing that, that are not pulling bones closer together so much, but they are increasing the, the surrounding tension, not only on one side of the, of the leg, but even on the front of the lower leg. And that explains the very nice pictures that you have shown to me. So I'm very intrigued. I, your explanations make a lot of sense. 
And I look for, uh, for further to collaborate with you um, in the future. So this is uh, my complete surprise. I had not known you, your name before uh, on this side of the Atlantic. And I thought you were some local hero who wants to promote his work uh, via fashion research. And I was completely wrong. I'm, it's very embarrassing. Uh, what you have presented is very profound. I want the audience to know that. Uh, and from my perspective, it makes a lot of sense. And if you would take that into athletic training, that uh, and the many examples that you have demonstrated, that should make a big difference. So thank you very much for allowing me to share this almost historic moment where you uh, share all these uh, insights with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I appreciate your comments and feedback. And uh, I'm looking to bring this to the world in Canada this year. And uh, definitely I open to any type of scientific scrutiny mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, double blind studies, twin studies, we're ready. And mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see a lot of results because in the past 10 years, I have poured a lot of my life, blood, sweat mm -hmm. into this work. And we finally found a way to balance the fibrotic response of the myofibroblast. And this is, this is the work of 10 years. So, you know, I'm very happy that I can share this stage with you to, to showcase this work. And I believe this work will, will help a lot of people